Uh, hi everybody, as Chip mentioned, my name is Michael Yi. I'm sales engineer here at OneLogin, and um, what my role is here is uh, to, to help customers understand uh, how OneLogin can uh, solve their identity and access management uh, needs, especially as it how it relates to um, an ever-growing popularity of deploying cloud-based applications and extending, and more importantly as the topic of this webinar is to extend the power of your AD to allow your end users to leverage your Active Directory credentials to access those cloud-based applications to make it easier them, for them to log in. So I'm going to start um, just in our uh, one login portal. Um, so I am going to show you kind of the typical end user experience. So a user would log in to uh, one login with their Active Directory credentials and they'll be presented with a screen uh, similar to the one you're, show, you're uh, seeing on my screenshot or screen share. Um, they'll have access to various applications which are indicated via tiles. These can be customized so you can uh, you know, make them look larger or if you have a lot of applications, you can uh, control the size of the tile itself. Um, as an end user, I'm just going to simply select the application I want to access and you'll see here that once I've selected that application, one login is handling the uh, uh, passing over of the credentials or actually the user's identity to the application, in this, in this case, Salesforce. And it logs me right into Salesforce with my particular uh, rights, my profiles, et cetera. Now, how we take care of that is actually, we start to synchronize uh, your user identities from Active Directory. And you'll notice here that if I go to my users tab, so I have an admin, I can look at all the users that are in one login. I can go over to my users tab, I can see the various users that are part of my organization. And this actually is all coming from Active Directory. So if I scroll through here, one of the examples I want to show you is creating a user uh, within one login and how simple it is because it simply comes from Active Directory. So you'll notice here that I don't have a, an individual uh, named Jimmy. So uh, I know in Active Directory, I've got a new employee. He's starting up. And so what I want to do is I want to move him into his appropriate OU. Uh, he's going to be in the marketing department. So if I switch over to my Active Directory, here's my user. Sorry about that. I need to just unlock my Windows machine here. But my user, Jimmy, I'm going to take him and move him into my marketing group. And so what happens is he gets moved over there. I make sure his account shows up. Now, if I switch back to one login, and now I can search for Jimmy, and he's uh, already populated into one login. So we have an Active Directory connector that's running on a member server in my domain, and that's synchronizing user changes, also user uh, moves. So I have the ability to select which OUs I'm monitoring. And if you see here in my configuration, one of the things that I have uh, checked off is to monitor that marketing OU. So the marketing OU is right here. And you can see here that I'm actually not monitoring the uh, user's OU. So that one is unchecked. So I know that my workflow is that users are automatically populated into the user's OU. And then me as an admin, I decide where they need to go. Um, and in this case, I moved Jimmy into the marketing OU, and once that was picked up by our Active Directory connector, uh, one login, the account for Jimmy was created in one login. Um, the Active Directory connector that we install, it's actually very lightweight, um, and we also can install multiple instances of the connector on uh, several machines in your environment, several servers. So you have redundancy uh, capabilities to the one login cloud. Now, once you got the uh, connector installed, you'll notice here that we bring over a certain number of attributes by default, but that doesn't limit you to the number of attributes you can use in one login. So I can add as many attributes as I want about a particular individual. And so you'll see here that I've added some custom attributes, or not necessarily, I wouldn't call them custom attributes. They're additional attributes that we don't synchronize by default. So for instance, telephone number, you can bring that over. And if you click down here, you can actually see a whole list of attributes, uh, Active Directory user attributes that we could bring over into one login. And you will be able to leverage those attributes to define who gets access to applications, 
And then additionally, we can actually populate some of this information into um, certain applications, which I'll show you in just a couple of minutes. So once you've got, uh, you know, your attributes set up, your users are coming over into one login, you'll actually notice that the user in information, if you go to the user's detail page, it's all populated. And so when I click on Jimmy Page's uh, uh, properties, you'll see here that, you know, I pulled over his title, his department is marketing, uh, you know, I got his SAM account name, his distinguished name, all of that's coming over from Active Directory. You also notice that he doesn't have group membership in, into anything. And so what I'm going to do is now I know that Jimmy needs an email account. And my company is now using Office 365. We've moved off of um, Exchange on-prem. So what I'm going to do is switch back to uh, my uh, account in Active Directory. And I have a group called Office 365, a security group that I want to add Jimmy to to actually provision his account into Office 365. So if I check that group name, I'm going to give him that uh, group. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and refresh his user details in Office 365, I mean in one login. So if I refresh his user details, You'll see here that our Active Directory connector again picked it up immediately, and now we show him as being a, a part of Office 365. And so now what happens is if I go over here, so these were the accounts that I had existing in Office 365 before. And I will just refresh that. And instantly, Jimmy's got an account now in Office 365. So with just a few clicks, um, you know, we've created the account within Office 365 using the power of one login's uh, connection and tie into Active Directory. Now, one of the other things that we can do, depending on the particular application, is I can actually uh, provision in certain details about the user into said application. So one of the other applications that we can provision into is some manage. Often people use this for either uh, asset tracking or kind of uh, service desk uh, type activities. So you'll see here that when I moved Jimmy in uh, previously, his account did not exist in my some manage tool. So I'm going to refresh my user uh, information again. And when I got his account into uh, one login, we actually created his account into some manage. And you can see that we actually were able to provision in his title, what type of user he is. So certain applications of, uh, have the ability to provision roles. So you might have an admin type role, as you can see here, my role is an admin versus a portal user versus a user. So applications that have the different levels of authority, we can provision that if the application lets us. We can also provision things like uh, for this particular application where they exist, if there are specific sites they belong to, and again, their department. So all of this we're leveraging via our rules uh, within one login, but we're leveraging uh, criteria created from Active Directory. So if I can show you exactly how that's done, it might make a little bit more sense. So let me go to the some manage rule here. And you will see that when I'm actually in my application configuration for some manage that I've gotten certain rules established. And the way that I established populating the New York location in the marketing location for Jimmy Page was that I have rules set up. And what they say is that if the department for that particular user contains the word marketing, we're going to set the department field within the application to marketing. And you can see here that we are able to pull out all of the available choices from that application. So these are the choices within that application that I've already been configured. So I just set a rule to define a match. So if it's something in AD, we match it to something in the application. You can likewise do uh, things like uh, groups as well. So you might say, I want to set roles. Roles can be set off of security group. So if I look at this one, this role set, this rule says if I'm a member of the security group called help desk admin, then in some manage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the role as administrator. 
So you can quickly see how the tie into Active Directory, and all the attributes that we're bringing over can leverage you the power to provision users into uh, applications, provide them to access based on their Active Directory credentials because you're not having to log into the application again. Once you're logged into the one login portal, you have access to all of your applications at the click of a button. And um, I think that's uh, you know a quick run through of the Active Directory connector, uh, the tie-in you know, to Active Directory, how we leverage the attributes, how we can simply make it easy for IT organizations to quickly create accounts within applications and help their end users uh, have seamless access to applications using the one using the one login portal.